Okay, it is now 10 o'clock and we'll go ahead and start. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kalina Guignard. I am the Program Compliance Specialist with the City of Columbia's Office of Business Opportunities. And we would like to welcome you today to our webinar on the impact of AI on small businesses. We hope that everyone who is on the call today receives a wealth of information to, on artificial intelligence, AI, and how it will affect your small business. Before we get started with the presentation, we do have some housekeeping rules. Um, we do ask for everyone to please keep your devices muted until the presenter opens the room for questions. If you do have questions for the presenter, we do ask to please either put your question in the chat or um, you can also, or you can unmute your device to ask the question. For those of you who did register through Eventbrite, we will have a, we will be sending out a survey later on today, and also we will have the um, today's presentation recorded and will be um, provided on our website. And once we have that uploaded to the website, we will send everyone a link to go on and access the recording. We will also have the PowerPoint presentation. We will share that with everyone who registered today as well. And um, if you have any questions, I'm sure our presenter will have her contact information available towards the end of today's presentation. But we're going to go ahead and start. But before we get into the um, feature presenter today, I just want to go over some couple things with our office on who we are and what we do. The Office of Business Opportunities, um, our office, we primarily serve a small minority women and veteran-owned businesses in the Columbia, area, Columbia, South Carolina area through three different areas. The first area is commercial loans and lending, which is financial assistance to start up and existing businesses for growth, expansion, retention, and the creation of new jobs and assistance in the redevelopment of commercial corridors. Contractor and Supply Diversity, which is training and support for city initiatives designed to increase local contractors' capacity to compete for government contracts and other procurement opportun opportunities. Programs include the Mentor Protege Program, Local Business Enterprise Program, and the Columbia Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. Technical Assistance Education and Advocacy, Business Development Assistance, and course Courses for Startups and Existing Businesses Looking to Grow and Expand. Topics covered include marketing, use of social media, business plan development, finances, legal issues, and more. So we do have ways of how we um, interact with our small business community. The first one is our Minority Business Opportunities Directory, and this provides information from city departments and our community partners on goods and services they are they procure, along with information on OBO supply diversity programs. We do have a copy of this on our website, and it's obo.columbiasc.gov, and we'll provide the QR code to our website in a couple slides. Also, we do have a weekly newsletter that is distributed weekly to um, almost 2,200 email addresses. Um, it, in that newsletter, it includes, our, uh, includes upcoming events from our office and our partners, funding opportunities, and helpful articles for your small business. Again, if you would like to sign up for our OBO newsletter, you can go to our website, obo.columbiasc.gov, and in the upper right-hand corner, click on the newsletter button, and once you click on there, you enter your information and you receive the next issue of our weekly newsletter. We also have opportunities for those who are interested in um, signing up to be in, a, be in a note on upcoming procurement opportunities with the City of Columbia, and this is through our EBIT system. EBIT is an online bidding system which eliminated traditional paper bids and replaces them with an electronic process via the internet. This is utilized for vendor management, and the general public is able to view current and canceled bids, but they must submit a bid, one must be registered. So in order for you to participate or some participate on a bid, you have to be registered through the city's eBay system. And as you can see, um, the only difference really is the logo, but the um, login page is still the same. But if you click on the supplier registration on the right of the screen and begin entering your information and make sure you do that within 14 business days. But if you have any questions on eBay, you can contact our office or you can contact the procurement and contract, contracts team. To register as a supplier, you can go to this website, uh, columbiasc.ironway.net to register, or you can scan the QR code that we have provided here, and it'll take you right to that page, and click on the supplier registration button to get started. 
Finally, if you have any questions on our office and the services that we offer, feel free to contact our office. This is our address. We are located here on Main Street, as on the corner of Main and Washington. But if you would like to contact our office directly, you can call us at 803-545-3950, or you can send us an email to obo at columbiasc.gov. And if you scan the QR code below, that is uh, that will take you directly to our obo.columbiasc.gov webpage. So now that I have um, finished my portion of our, of our office and everything that we do, I'm going to turn it over to our presenter for today. Um, please welcome Ms. Donna Davis. Hello, everyone. I hope that you all are doing well. I am so excited to have you here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the presentation. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see here. Okay. I can't always see the chat. I have it up now, but can you put in the chat whether you can see my screen, the impact of AI on small business? I just want to make sure that everyone sees it before I get going. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so today I am very excited about this presentation and I thank you all for your time, for joining me today as we talk about in this webinar, the impact of AI on small businesses. We're going to explore how AI can revolutionize your business, how it can enhance your operation, and your customer service experience while giving you data so that you can make improvements on what it is that you are doing. As Kalina said, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we can have a discussion as we go along. My name is Donna Davis. I am CEO of DW Davis Consulting. And yes, I am a certified AI consultant. And I help small businesses and entrepreneurs who are understaffed and don't have the funding that some bigger companies and organizations do. I help them to succeed and I help them to excel while harnessing the power of AI. And I do that specifically by helping businesses to train AI in their business brand, voice, and tone. Today, we're going to be talking about specifically the impact of AI on small businesses. And we will talk about Columbia, South Carolina specifically. I'm going to give you strategies that you can use today in order to make a difference in your bottom line. And we're going to walk through three AI tools for small businesses. I'm going to do a demo. So I'm actually going to take you into the tool so that you understand the power of the tool and the things that those tools can do for you. Now, I do have a question. How many of you are currently using AI in your business? If you are currently using AI, can you put me in the chat? So Robin is, thank you, Robin. Okay. Well, this is exciting. This is really great for those of you that are not. Let's begin with the history of AI. What I want you to understand is that AI has always been with us. This is not the first time. And I know AI, it seems like it has been a boom all of a sudden. And a lot of people are fearful of it. And I do understand that fear. But AI has been around, actually, even before the 50s and the 60s. The, the first large language model was the ELISA model um, in the 60s and the 70s. But I want to show you more on a regular, everyday basis how AI has been impacting your life. 
somebody tell me, have you ever made a call for customer service, either to check a bill or something wasn't done right, and you get that wonderful automated system that say, if you want to reach this person, click this. If you want to reach that person, click that. <laughs> yes, and it is so frustrating. I'm going to tell you what I do. I end up yelling at the phone, customer service, customer service. <laughs> and sometimes it'll say, I don't understand what it is that you're saying. Let me get you a person. Yes, that's what I want. And all of us at one time or another have probably experienced this type of relationship with our phone, with a computer on the other end. Guess what? That is AI. And it uses AI-driven customer service automation. It's been around for decades. It has improved because it it wasn't really developed initially to understand complex conversations, but where AI has evolved to today, it can actually answer more and more of those questions. But that is AI. So I, I wanted to share that with you just to give you a vision of how we have always been using it. And again, AI is everywhere. So we can fast forward Bojangles. Um, and I can't recall exactly where, but I was watching the video recently installed AI to take orders. And it is so advanced, it even upsells. And this brings about a lot of fear for people, right? And one of those fear is, will AI replace me? Will AI replace jobs? And I want to begin by saying AI will be able to make our lives more efficient, that there are less mistakes that are happening, but AI is only as good as the person that programs it. Person being the key word. AI need human interaction. The robots are not coming on their own trying to figure out and take over the world. So something that we can do is learn AI, which is part of what you're doing here today, is learn how to harness AI, learn the best method for implementing AI. AI will make things more efficient, but again, as AI grow, so will the knowledge base of the individuals that interact with it. So again, companies all over the world are using AI. Google, if you have Gmail and you're sending someone an email, there is a little bot that will ask you, do you want me to rewrite this? That's AI. Facebook has implemented it. Google, Amazon. We cannot get away from AI. So what we can do is learn how to best integrate it into our lives. And that brings me to the state of South Carolina specifically. Everywhere, all over the nation, everyone is trying to figure out how do we fit AI into what it is that we're doing? And as you can see, South Carolina um, has a blueprint of how it will leverage AI in state government. Um, is how it's impacting education. And we hear that a lot with tools like ChatGPT, which is one of the tools we're going to go over today. AI is here. Businesses, large businesses are using AI, and so are small businesses. And to show you a little bit of how AI works before we get to our demo, as I was doing research for this presentation, I began to wonder how many small businesses in Columbia, South Carolina are using AI. So I went to an AI tool called Perplexity. 
And this is the information that Perplexity gave me. And as you can see, I don't know if you recognize it or not, Kalina, but per Perplexity pulled up this webinar that is happening today. Perplexity AI is one of the AI tools that is up to date. When you ask it questions, it will actually give you um, the source where it pulls the information from. Because I do understand that one of the fears of AI is that it makes up stuff, right? And it can. It can hallucinate if it doesn't have enough information. But I simply went into Perplexity AI, and this is my question, what you see up top, how are businesses in Columbia, South Carolina embracing AI? And it goes into the small business support. And I don't know if you can see, there are numbers here that says one, one, one. And when you click on the numbers in Perplexity, it actually takes you to the source that the AI used to get the information. So this is what we call, what I call verifying the information that AI gives you and perplexity helps you do that. So when I click on the number one, as you see right here, this is what came up. I just did a clip and this is from the OBO page and it has this webinar listed there. And if you go further down the economic development strategies, there was number twos. So when I clicked on the number two, there's an article on more to the point. Um, artificial intelligence is here. Is South Carolina ready? And this is, of course, the more business school at the University of South Carolina. Uh, so this is perplexity, one of the AI tools that you can go in and ask questions, and if you want sources and those type of things, when you click on the numbers, and this actually would be at the bottom of the page as well, it will give you that information. I wanted to share that. But what about the future of AI? We're talking about it being here, um, but the future of AI is that it is going to be even more integrated. People are looking for ways to improve it. Siri is AI. Alexa is AI. It is already integrated into our everyday life. And it can be scary if we try to consume it all at one time. I would suggest just picking one of the platforms and begin to understand how it works and how it can work for your small business. And then you can branch out. Small businesses really are on the cusp of having something great. When it comes to leveling the playing field for what it is that you do. Big businesses can hire PR companies and all of these things and hire all of these people. And what AI has done is put all of these positions in your hand, just on your phone or on your computer. Small business and AI adoption, again, this came from perplexity. And up, up to 29% of small businesses have already adopted AI, but that's just 29%. 25% of small businesses are currently using AI in some form, and that's according to a study um, by Stanford University. Planned AI investments. 83% of small business owners plan to continue investing in AI over the next 12 months. Again, AI can help in so many different ways. And these, this is the type of impact that AI can have on your business. What does it mean for your business? Imagine automating your customer service with something called chatbots. 
and using AI to analyze your market trends or personalizing your marketing efforts. Imagine if what you sold, AI could tell you what is most popular this month. AI can analyze your sales over the past year so that you know what it is that you need to focus on. It is a powerful tool, a powerful tool for you. So efficiency. AI helps streamline operations and automate tasks, significantly enhancing your efficiency. It can help you, again, increase your revenue by helping you to decide what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. It helps you with your decision making in your organization. Customer engagement. AI can enhance your customer interaction and engagement through a personalized experience and support. And most important to all businesses and especially small businesses, right, is cost reduction. AI helps in reducing your operational costs by automating those routine tasks and, re and improving your resource management. Here are some strategies that you can use um, in order to maximize the impact of AI on your business. Content creation. That's social media. Um, if you do newsletters, if you do if you do posters, any type of content, content for your website, AI can help you in a matter of seconds. Imagine sitting down trying to figure out how to design um, your next launch, right? What it is that you want. How, how are you going to set this up? AI can do that for you with the right prompting, uh, brainstorming. If you know what it is that you want to do, but you don't exactly know all of the things that you can think about, you can just put your thoughts in AI and, and they don't have to be ordered and they don't have to be in any specific way. You can brainstorm with AI to help bring your vision to life. Problem solving. Again, you can upload documents into AI. You can send AI to a website and ask it questions. You can ask, is my website optimized? What, what is it that my ideal customer want in this segment? It's research. It brings research down um, and it helps you to improve that much better. And then there's something called custom GPTs. And the best way that I can describe it is if, if you have went to a website and you have seen the little box that says, ask a question here, or a box will pop up and say, how may I help you? That is a custom GPT. And they have been trained to answer questions about the website and different things on the website. And some of them are limited because at some point it will say, um, call this number for customer service. But again, the custom GPTs are getting more and more advanced. But you can create custom GPTs for other things than a chat bot on your website. You can create custom GPTs to train your staff, right? So that if they have a question, oh, I, I can't remember how we did X, Y, Z, they can go in and ask the GPT and it will answer it for them. And that will cut down on, you know, your employees coming to you. And sometimes it's like, oh, keep asking the same questions over and over. It is a simple, simple solution. So these are four basic ways and strategies that AI can impact your business even today. Now, what I am about to do, I am going to go over three AI tools for small business 
that can change the trajectory of your business if you are not already using them and implementing them. Um, I'm going to go over Gamma AI, Eleven Labs, and Chat GPT. And in just a minute, I'll, I'll tell you what each one of those are. But imagine how much more you could achieve if you had an extra set of hands. Who here can use an extra set of hands in their business? Can you use an extra set of hands in your business? And how about if you didn't have to pay those hands? Is that even better? Even better. And a bonus. <laughs> what if those extra set of hands thought just like you? So you won't have to look at what they say and be like, what is this? What in the world? Oh my goodness. Imagine that. That is what AI offers you. It streamlines your tasks. It gives you more time to focus on what truly matters to you in your business, building deeper relationships, unleashing your creativity and driving your business forward with passion and purpose. How many of you are not expanding because you don't even have time to think because you're just going over the same problems day after day? AI is a solution for you. So let me just briefly talk about be before um, I demonstrate them. Gamma AI is a presentation tool. It can build out your website. It can create flyers. It can create newsletters. It can create presentations. It is a powerful tool. And I will demonstrate that for you shortly. Eleven Labs is the second AI tool that I wanted to show you. Um, and it's a text to speech. You can write information in and you can get 11 labs to speak it for you. This cuts down on if you were creating, um, if you were creating videos for new staff hiring, if you had a YouTube channel for your business and you and you talked about it, you gave a tip a day, you you would not have to sit down and say, okay, I got to look right. I got to do all this stuff so that I can begin to do these recordings in 11 labs. It happens in a matter of minutes. And I will show you that. And chat GPT, chat GPT is a, is a human like model. It's like having a conversation. It's what a lot of organizations use. And and I don't know if you all have seen, you can just put anything in ChatGPT and it will just give you all of this wonderful stuff. This is where content creation and a whole lot of stuff goes on. But let me tell you, there is a way to do it. If that excites you, there is a way for it to wow you. And I'm going to show you that right now. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to look to see for a moment if we have any questions. I don't see any questions. I'm trying to end my show so I can get to what I need next. So I'm going to put some links in the chat because if you would like, if you are on your computer, you can go to the sites that I'm about to take you to with me and play around. So you can either watch or you can sign up if you haven't signed up for ChatGPT, Gamma, or 11 Labs and go along with me. So with that, I'm going to share my screen again because I don't see any questions. Make sure I share the right screen, hopefully. So let me ask you my question. Do you all see chat GPT on the screen? Let me see. 
can y'all put in the chat if you see um, chat GPT on your screen? I just want to make sure. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. But let me go to chat and see what. Um... So this is chat GPT. You have the link in, in the chat if you don't already have an account. And chat GPT does have a free version. All of these models that I'm talking to you today about do have a free version. And with the free version, you can get the majority of the information that I am talking about today. It's just if you have a paid version, it goes a little deeper. So for chat GPT, I do have the paid version. But as you can see, it's the GPT-4, GPT-40 mini, and the GPT-40, which is what I currently have. And over here, you know, it will store any type of questions that you have. And let me see, I'm going to have to move my bar up. Because it's in my way. Give me one moment. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now, when I say, you can ask Chat GPT anything, any question in the world, and it will answer it for you. But let me show you the power of training ChatGPT in your business voice and tone. And I'm just going to say, again, this is my account. So I'm going to say, tell me who I am and what I do regarding and I'm being specific because I, I have my I have my ch AI trained on quite a few things. And what I do regarding AI, and it's a simple question. So let's see. It says, you are Donna Davis, a seasoned professional with a rich background in both sociology and psychology, further enhanced by a master's degree. That's giving my whole history, your journey into the world of AI, is marked by your certification as an AI consultant and active membership in the International Association of Artificial Intelligence Consulting. AI knows that. In the realm of AI, you operate as a guide and strategist, leveraging your deep understanding. So this is the power of AI when it's trained through your consulting firm, D.W. Davis Consulting, also known as Donna Davis Presents. You empower others to make intentional shifts in their lives and businesses, ensuring that AI is not just a technological advancement, but a means to fulfill a greater purpose. This is, so let me see if I can, if I can find you, I wanna ask you all. So somebody put in the chat something that they want um chat gpt to do a question do you want it to create something give you something if you put it in the chat we will see and while i'm waiting on that i'm just going to copy this for the next tool so nobody has anything okay so how about I ask AI, um, I'm going to tell it to create something. Create a standard operating procedure for answering client calls. 
And that's a very simple prompt. But as you can see, standard operating procedure for answering clients' call, it gives the purpose, it gives the scope, and it goes into the procedure um, greeting answer within the first three rings, use a friendly voice, greet the client with, it even tells you what to greet the client with. And again, it's talking about my business, right? During the call, this is what you need to do. Handling difficult situations, it goes deep into, you know, even concluding the call. And after the call, what do you do? And follow up and continuous improvement. Imagine, it tells me what the version is, the effective date. I can download this if I copied it here and paste it into a Google Doc or a Word document and make changes. That is the thing to understand about AI. It's only going to give you um, certain information and you can always change it. It is up to you to verify the information that you get. Now, let's say I wanted to know um, the satisfaction of customers of customers that typically get calls. And I'm just going to see, I'm going to say, create a graph. showing how I can improve customer service calls if I am at a, let's see, 30% satisfaction rate. Now, I'm saying if I'm at a 30% satisfaction rate, but if I have actually been logging my calls into a document with this paperclip, I could actually upload that document and ask it to give me a chart showing me the information from the actual satisfaction of my clients. So let's see if it does this, because I'm asking it to make up something based on information that I gave it. So what you see is coding, right? So this is coding. And a lot of times businesses have to hire someone to do codes. And not only did it do the coding, it actually drew the graph. It said, here's a graph that outlines a plan to improve customer service satisfaction from a current rate of 30%. Again, AI is only as good as the information you put in. Um, to a target of 100%, the stages of improvement includes, it tells me, implementing training, refining scripts, integrating feedback, conducting regular reviews, and incorporating technology. And I can simply say, I don't know how to do any of the improvement suggestions. Let's see. Create a detailed plan. I don't know how to do it, right? So when we say we don't know how to do some things, training implementation, it gives the objectives, it gives the actual actions and tell you how to do it. Script refinement, like what was that? It standardized your customer service interaction and it goes into how to do it. Feedback integration, regular reviews, these are things that you can use AI for today in your business in order to make an immediate impact. So I'm going to go to our next tool because it's going to give final thoughts. Again, I do have the paid version of ChatGPT um, and 
it does give a little more in-depth information, but the free version does give great information as well. But let's move to the next tool that I want to go over with you, and that is 11 Labs. It's called 11 Labs. It is a text to speech. And 11 Labs is very important. Again, if you have a podcast for your business, if you have a YouTube station and you want to create regular information, sometimes with some of the courses that I create, I use 11 Labs to do the voiceover so that I can quickly create videos. So I, I copied some of the information um, from ChatGPT, as you saw, so that we can do a text to speech here. And this just tells a little bit about who it is that I am. And as you can see, you can choose a voice, right? So let's see, Adam. Our distrust is very expensive. So that's Adam. But again, you can actually integrate your voice into 11 labs, which is something that I have done. So I want this to tell who it is that I am in my voice. So we generate you are speech. Dana Davis, a seasoned professional with a rich background in both sociology and psychology, further enhanced by a master's in human resources. Do y'all hear that? From Clemson University. Your journey into the world of AI is marked by your certification as an AAI consultant and active membership in the International Association of Artificial Intelligence Consultants. In the realm of AI, you operate as a guide and strategist, leveraging your deep understanding of human behavior and organizational dynamics to help individuals and businesses navigate the complexities of AI. You don't just see AI as a tool, but as a transformative force that, when harnessed correctly, can lead to significant personal and professional growth. Does that sound like me? That is my AI voice. So a lot of times people don't know, is it AI or is it actually Donna? And there are many voices that are free here. And if you all clicked on the 11 Labs link, you'll see it. So Upbeat, um, let's see. Let me see. Let's see what hey, are you looking does. for a fresh and engaging voice well. for your podcast or social media? Then I'm the voice for you. So I can actually have Alice to say this as opposed to me. I don't you know. are Donna Davis, a seasoned oh. professional with a rich background She's in sociology and psychology, further enhanced by a master's in human Let's resource development. That. But as you can see, so Robin said, do you find it captures the voice inflections well, or would you use this for recordings when you want to be more professional? So um, to answer that, Robin, you can adjust the inflections of your voice. The thing about it is if you're going to have it replicate your voice is that you upload enough information of you speaking so that it can catch all of those inflections. I was, well, not lazy <laughs> when I did mine, but I have several, um, what I did was I have several examples of me doing different speaking engagements and I uploaded all of those. So sometimes I have to adjust it some because I'm like, oh, it's, it's a little slow. So you can adjust the levels, even on the pre-made voices, if you want them to slow down or something like that. Okay, you see, I tend to be very excited when I when I speak, especially about what we do. Absolutely. I'm excited too, as, as you can tell. And that is what I uploaded for 11 Labs. But again, you it has different voices. Um, 
with different descriptions you can actually create a voice if you have the paid version you can say i i want my voice to sound like a teenager um who's in the middle of an auditorium because something else that 11 labs have is something called sound effects this is like having a professional studio because when, when you all heard um, my speech, there was no background noise. It, it was clear. It was like being in a recording studio. Again, this is something to level the playing field for small businesses. And big businesses use this all the time. So that's 11 Labs and a quick overview. Now, Gamma. Gamma is amazing. Um, you can do Gamma, you can create new, you can do new from blank, which means you can just create on, you can tell it what to put on each slide. You can import if you have something on you. If you have a PowerPoint, for example, the PowerPoint that I'm using, I did not use Gamma to create it, but I could upload it into Gamma and ask it to improve it or something like that. But let's create from new and let's stay with um, the customer service thing. So you can either paste in text, for example, the same text that I have copied about myself, I could create a presentation about it. You can have it to generate with a one-line prompt, or you can import your file. If you have, you can import your URL from your website and ask it to create a presentation on your website, about your website. So let's just use a one-line prompt for now. I just want you to be able to see the different things. And again, you can ask it to generate a website. It will actually lay out a website for you. It says, is the answer of chat GPT correct? Can we trust it? I'm sorry, Hanny. I, I didn't see the first part of your question and the answer. Are you talking about the answer about who it is that I am? Because... That was the first question I asked. Um, so, or you can have it to create a document. But what we're going to do is to create a presentation. And let's see, what were we talking about in Gamma? Um, the last thing we said was, let's see, pre, pre, huh? would be great if I spelled it correctly. And you don't always have to spell correctly, by the way. Create a presentation. On answering. Um, customer service calls. I do know how to spell presentation. Okay. And what AI will do if you click on the um the gamma AI that I put in the um in the chat for you, it will let you create up to eight cards for free. So I still have the free version of gamma. So what you're about to see is exactly what it is that you would get also. I'm going to say generate outline. And so the outline, it says introduction to customer service, importance of effective preparing for the call, active listening techniques, empathetic communication, handling different com difficult conversations, resolving customer issues, and continuous improvement and feedback. And you can always add cards. If you if you wanted it to cover something else that's not listed, you can delete, you can update, um, or you can add cards. So we're going to continue with this. 
She said, I want to know about trusting. Oh, the trusting of AI. Yes, I, I will talk about that. Um, and AI in every sense, you you want to be careful not to put your personal information out there, your identifying information. But for example, on ChatGPT, the first tool that I took you to, it does, it will use information that you put in to train the model for other people. It w won't necessarily pull your information somewhere else. But if you're skeptical of that, there is something on chat GPT where you can tell it to forget the information that you put in. And that's what I currently have activated on my chat GPT is that you can turn off the memory. So th that's the memory. So it won't remember um, what it is that you're asking and it won't use it um for other models so that's a very good question hanny uh so here it is showing us that you we can pick a theme we can custom our theme which i do have a custom theme and the great thing about gamma is on the free version it will let you custom your theme which means when I say custom is your brand voice, well, not your brand voice and tone, but your brand colors. So I, I'm gonna use that, I'll use that. And it tells you what the primary button or color is and the secondary. So I'm gonna tell it to generate. And again, you can upload information your um your logo, your colors, and it will automatically create your presentation in your brand colors. How cool is that? Let me show you. Of course, my colors, my primary colors are orange and purple, but peach is one of my neutral colors. But look at this presentation. Did y'all see how, like in a matter of five seconds, I could pull this presentation down and go present it somewhere. That's how quick this works. Um, Robin says, nice. So again, and also with this, you can change everything on here. If you don't like something, if it has, and usually I don't have a lot of writing on my screen when I present. And technically, if I'm teaching someone how to present, I would say not to do that. Just cut this out and put it in your speaker notes. But let's say I didn't like um, this picture. I can, I can delete it. I can... Um, add another picture. I can download this presentation, upload it into Canva. And in Canva, I would change the writing because I have specific, um, specific, um, what is it? I, I have specific writing styles that I have uploaded into Canva so that any of my presentation is, is going to be in what it is like times Roman, it's not time Roman noodles numeral, but it's what I have uploaded. So let's go look at this. The importance of effective customer service. Again, if I don't like the picture and if you click on it, you can see that it's in little boxes and there's a little ad where you can add an item. If I wanted to add an item, it was just that quick as you see number four. And then let's just take it away. Um, importance of effective customer service, preparing for customer service calls. So let's say you hired someone and you wanted to train them on how important it is for your customers to be taught right. And y'all, look at these rich colors that it automatically creates in the pictures for me. These are all AI-generated pictures. 
And because it's representing my brand um, tone, it brings it out. Empathetic communication, acknowledge, empathize, reassure. And it also came up with this information just by that one simple prompt that I put in. Imagine if you put in a deeper prompt. Imagine that. And then you can present, which I, I won't do that here because that will mess me up. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing that. Whew, how was the presentation on those? I, I know I kind of went through them. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint and pick up from where we left off there. Let's see. Robin says, as you mentioned earlier, Donna, it is important to read what AI generates for you to ensure you are comfortable with the information and understand it as you are presenting. Absolutely. I didn't want to take time, but usually in chat GPT, there are the clipboards at the bottom of everything that it generates. If you click on it and you paste it into a document, that's your opportunity to go through and change it and make it yours. You don't have to accept everything that AI gives you just because AI put it out. I think a lawyer got in trouble recently because he looked up a case using AI and he didn't check the sources and the information was wrong because if AI don't know, it will make it up because it wants to make you happy. Hey, Donna. I have a question, um, and I think this was going back to um, Haney's original question. Like when it comes down to attorneys or doctors or anyone like that using AI, and if they Google, I'm just saying not Google, if they want to look up something like um, heart issues or something like that, and are, do they need to make sure like if the information is coming from like a reliable source like a school of medicine or a well-known doctor or WebMD or something, how would they be able to, to do that? Again, for something like that, I would use perplexity, chat GPT, and I didn't go into the nuances. I could do a session just on the power of chat GPT. But for perplexity, for example, it gives you the sources. So I don't know if you all remember, I was clicking on the little one and two, and it takes you to the source where it pulled the information from. You want to check Google, for example, is AI, by the way. So if you're Googling, you're, you're using AI. For a doctor, Hopefully the doctor is just verifying something that they believe because they have been trained um, in their profession and they're just checking something because we're getting into the ethics of AI, right? You want to make sure that the people that are using AI are trained on how to effectively implement it in your business. You don't want to make life or death decisions based on AI. I, I can look up, for example, going into space. I could create a presentation. I can sound like I'm an astronaut. But when it comes to actually teaching that to somebody else, I would not do that because that is not my expertise. I only use it for informational purposes. And if I'm using it for implementation purposes, that is the difference. That is when I would pull back. I would actually contact NASA and say, you know, is there somebody that I can collaborate with on your team that they can read what it is that I have and verify that I'm doing the right thing? So, um, yeah, so the answer that ChatGPT gives is only based on information that has been put in. So that's something else that we need to remember. It has billions and billions of pieces of information that it grabbed from all over the internet, but that does not mean that it knows everything. 
And we should not take what we get at face value. I will always say, verify. And if it's something that don't necessarily need verifying, like the um, the um, customer service, how to answer a phone call thing that I just showed, then you have to figure out is what it's saying aligning with my business and how I want my business to operate, right? So for example, it gave a script, right? Hello, this is so-and-so at what, you might not want them to say hello. Once upon a time, um, the state of South Carolina, we had to answer the phone. Good morning, it's a great day in South Carolina. How can I help you? <laughs> So it's things like that. It will it will give you something to go by, but you need to refine it for your business, which your business voice authenticity is really what matters. People still, even though everyone may be, a, a lot of people may be using AI, people still connect to people. They are not connecting to the AI. That's why they know when it sounds robotic. That is why I trained my AI to sound like me in case I need to do something really quick. Somebody say, Donna, I need a bio from you. Kalina asked me for a bio and I'm like, oh my God, which one of these bio do I give? I just went to chat GPT. I'm, I'm doing the seminar. Give me a 500 word bio. And I looked at it and I tweaked it because I didn't necessarily like all of the things, but it said everything about me and I didn't have to make it up. And again, my memory is off. So it's not taking my information about me and doing anything else with it because I did not give it that permission. So it, so, um, it's still, so basically you're saying like, even we could still use the tools but it's still important to make sure that everything is in alignment with what we want it to say. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just because it says something, you don't have to take it at face value. I have written, it's a conversation and, you know, there's Gemini, Perplexity, Claude. Those are all other versions of chat GPT. They all do the same thing. And it's a conversation. And I have said before, no, I'm typed in. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> do it, do it another way. And with that, I will say, be nice to the AI because it will come back at you because it does have a sense of humor the way that you deal with it. So I like saying, please. I like saying, thank you. I like saying, I like that. And if you have, for example, ChatGPT downloaded on your phone, you can actually speak. I'm doing, a, I'm doing tons of research all the time for my business and I'll be in the car and, and, and y'all know how something will come to your mind and you be repeating it over and over and over because when you get to where it is that you're going, you're going to forget it. Yep, that's me. So, so I will just hit the um, button on chat GPT and say, create X, Y, Z. Tell me about whatever, whatever, whatever. And it will do it in a matter of seconds. So when I do get home or somewhere, I can go back, I can go on the computer and look at it and then refine it. The other thing that I would say is be careful how you ask um, AI questions. Now, I, I, I did not do prompt engineering. I, I didn't go into how deeply how to ask questions. I just ask some simple questions. But if you ask simple questions, you're going to get simple answers. So for example, when I asked it for my bio, I said, I'm doing a webinar on effective strategies for AI for small businesses. And I need my bio to reflect just the AI part of my business. And I don't want it to have my credentials. I mean, and that is going deep into prompt engineering. And because my AI already knows that information about me, it says, okay, thank you. And it, and it spits it out. Um, 
Robin said, I've done that as well, and it's great. Thank you so much for this information, Don. I have to jump on another call. Thank you, Robin, for joining. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint so that we can finish off. Let's see. Current slide, here we go. So that was our demonstration slide that we left off from. Chat GPT best practices. Again, Chat GPT is a powerful language model that can assist with customer service, content creation, data analysis, and a whole lot more. It's like having an extra team member who can handle various tasks efficiently. It's, it's like having your twin that you don't even have to talk to. You don't have to pay. It works 24 hours a day. It is wonderful. It can transform your customer service with instant responses to inquiry. It can generate engaging content. It can analyze who your target market is and create content just for you. Also, ChatGPT can create pictures. I, I didn't go into all of it. I just showed you how it can create a graph, but it can even create pictures once you know how to use effective prompts clearly define your needs and provide context um if you integrate chat gpt into your existing business process for seamless operation i promise you it will make a difference the real power of chat gpt however is training it in your business voice and tone so that it does become your assistant. How do you maximize AI impact? In order to maximize it, prioritize the implementation in areas that will provide the most benefit to you. Invest in training and development to ensure your team can effectively use AI tools. And you all being here today is one example of that. So look for cost-effective solutions that offer the best return on investment. I would say consider starting with small manageable AI projects because it can become overwhelming. So if you start small, it allows you to see quick wins and to build your momentum. So focus on areas like customer service, marketing, and data analysis where AI can provide immediate benefits for you. And with that, this is my QR code if you would like to schedule a business consultation with me. Feel free to do that. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and answer any additional questions that you may have. So if anybody has any questions for Donna, anything on the presentation, you can unmute your device to ask the question or you can put the question in the chat. So Donna, I, I do have a question um, regarding as far as like advertising. I think that was the one that you kind of touched on a little bit. Um, when we talked about ensuring that what you add using those tools as an advertisement like if you wanted to use i uh, say chat G gpt to create a flyer for your business um yeah. and sometimes we can you know we'll be a little bit detailed as far as like what we want the flyer to show so is that is there a way like if you wanted to go in because i think you had you touched on a little bit about like the color scheme the theme and everything like that and is is it just as important to being specific on things like that versus just doing a presentation because you know you're promoting you're selling your business yes absolutely that's a great question so in chat gpt or in gamma you could create that flyer and you tell it the colors that you want it to create it in and it will. And again, that's all prompt engineering, right? Our colors are, I mean, you can even put in the hex code 
and it will give you the exact colors. Now in chat GPT, it will probably give you a link to um, something like Canva to go in and actually create that flyer. But if you say, I don't know how to do this, it will give you all of the information. You can be as detailed, the more detailed, the better. But just know it's also about refining. So if it creates a flyer for you and you say, oh, I forgot to put this, you can say, recreate, leave everything the same, but add this. Or you can tell it to take something out or you can tell it, that you want it to be more specific or you want the color palette. Let's say I would say orange and purple and let's say it did more orange than purple. But for the specific thing that I'm doing, I'm like, can you make purple the primary color and orange the secondary color? And it will do it. Okay. Anyone else with any questions? Now's the time to ask your question. <laughs> Okay. Well, I know for me, I learned a huge wealth of information today on um, Gamma AI. I wrote everything down. Gamma <laughs> AI, 11 Labs, and Chat GPT. I can't write in Chat GBT, but <laughs> Chat GPT. GPT, yeah. GPT. And it, it looks like if you use it the way you want it to be used, it'll work out it work out um, extremely. We got a comment from Camille Shaw. Hey, Camille. Um, she said, if you um, if you can, can you do a demonstration of creating a flyer? Mm -hmm. I think we kind of, we did that earlier with the, I think you did something like that with the customer service. Is that kind of similar? The customer service. The one that you did. The customer service, I did a, um, I did a PowerPoint. Um, so, okay. Let's see. Let's try both. Let's try Chat GPT and Gamma. I'll I'll make the time. Hold on. We'll we'll, we'll just see what what happens. Right. This is this is what I like. We'll see what happens. Uh, Oops. Little screen. Okay. Uh, I got out of my chat, GPT. Give me a moment here. Okay. So we'll begin with, let's see, do I want to do a new flyer? I'm, I'm going to go back to the one we just did so that it has that information. If I start new, it won't remember this because remember I cut my memory off. So I'm going to say, create a flyer on customer service. And that is the most bland um, prompt that can be put in. So it's doing this flyer and uh, it does a call to action, what we offer, visual elements. So this is where it's telling us how to create it, right? It's saying color schemes, is designed visually. And let's see what happens if I say, Create the actual flyer. So to tell you the information that goes into it, one of the things about ChatGPT is that it uses something called Dolly. Ooh, I don't know if y'all can see this. Here is the flyer designed for promoting customer service. So I'm going to say, thank you, because of course I want to be nice. Can you create it? Me and where my hand is on my, and orange. 
and purple. And it's thinking. All this means is that it's thinking. Ooh, y'all look at that. Elevate your customer service experience because customer service, because every customer serve experience. So I want you to pay attention to the miswriting on some of this, right? What we offer and some of the off colors. This is where, and it's asking which one of these do I want? That's why it put it side by side. So I'm going to do a thumbs down. Did I do a thumbs down? Yeah, I did a thumbs down to that one. If I really like this, and I was like, wow, this is really cool how it looks. Right here, I can download it. And when I download it, this is what I would upload into Canva and have and make all of the changes. And there are things in Canva you can do that you can pick up the writing and um, yeah, pick up the writing and replace it. So I say here are two versions with the color scheme. The, they should align well with your branding preference. If you need any further adjustments, feel free to ask. And this is the main thing. Feel free to ask. So I can say, for example, this is too busy and have too many words. Make it simpler, but keep the impact. This is what we call prompt engineering right here. What, what, what you see me doing. I'm looking at it. I'm saying, oh, that's too many words. I want it simpler, but I want you to keep the impact that you currently have. So this is called refining the prompt. The deeper you go, the more information. Ah, look at that. It's not as busy anymore. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing um, and see what you all have to say about that. Okay, Camille says amazing. Questions. It looks like we don't have any questions or comments, but um, Donna, if you want to kind of go ahead and I think you did your presentation, but you want to wrap it up with any closing comments that you have, you feel free to do that now. And also, if you don't mind putting your contact information in the chat, because I know people want to maybe want to get in touch with you and ask you some questions later. And I'll make sure to put that on the email that we sent out later today. Um, because for anyone who registered through Eventbrite, you will receive an email from, from me today with the link to our survey and um, the, attack, the PowerPoint presentation Donna did today. And I also have Donna's contact information and the um the four webs the four web pages that she talked about today chat gbt gpt 11 labs gamma and gamma so i'll provide those links for you to kind of look through it and make sure that you know is there anything on it that you may have any questions on and donna has provided her email address in the chat and um so we'll go ahead and close right now. But first off, I really want to thank Donna for this presentation. Donna, awesome, awesome job. I think everyone today learned a lot about AI and how it affects your small business. So it looks like it's going to do pretty much everything that you wanted to do. But just to ensure that you do it, what you do, what it's asked, you do what it asks. So, um, but there's, I think we do, well, we don't have, excuse me. But I will say this again, for everybody who registered through Eventbrite, you will receive the PowerPoint presentation and a link to a survey because we want to know your feedback. We want to know if you love the presentation, you want to know need improvement, but we want to know. And I, I think she did an awesome job, but my opinion doesn't really matter. <laughs> but 
we really want, want to know from you if you want to see more and more webinars, in-person events like this for our office to provide in the future. So please take the time to do the survey. It's a less than five minute survey, really simple questions. And we'll probably have it open for about a week. So make sure to take the time, five minutes out of your schedule to do that. Also, excuse me, um, a lot of you were asking about the recording. We are working on getting it getting a recording to post to our website. We're working on that right now. So once I get the link set up, because I don't do that, we will send that as well. But um, I know we have some staff on, on the call. I want to thank the staff for attending today. And we also have, I think Camille Shaw is also on the call. Thank you, Camille, for being on the call today. And um, any and anything else, but Donna, I'll let you close with any closing comments you have, and then I'll close. Okay, thank you, Kalina. I want to again thank thank the Office of Business Opportunity for this opportunity to present on AI. I just want everyone to know that AI is here, but we don't have to fear it. We can harness the power so that our businesses can grow. And that is why I am here to help you to best implement the different aspects of AI into your business. That's why I just wanted to give you an overview of how powerful just a few of the tools are. So hopefully it sparked some interest for you. You'll begin to play around with it. And more importantly, you begin to implement it into your business. All right, thank you, Donna. And again, um, if you have any questions on the Office of Business Opportunities and everything that we do here, or you wanna learn more how it can help your business, um, you can contact us here at 803-545-3950, or you can send us an email, obo at columbiasc.gov. Also go to our website, obo.columbiasc.gov. Excuse me, the email address is obo at columbiasc.gov. But um, again, thank you all for attending today's webinar. We look forward to, um, we'll be doing another one hopefully in September. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you sign up to the OBO newsletter to stay in the know of upcoming events and things to help with your small business. And on behalf of the Office of Business Opportunities, thank you for attending today's webinar and enjoy the rest of your day.